Algebra 1, 6.2a, Recognizing Differences of Two Perfect Squares. For a binomial to be the difference of two squares or two perfect squares, it's got to have two conditions. The first one is, it must have two terms that are both perfect squares, or both squares. So 4a squared and 9a to the fourth power are perfect squares, because 2 times 2 is 4, and 3 times 3 is 9, and a times a is a squared, and a squared times a squared gives us a to the fourth power. Or even 25 and x squared, because 5 times 5 is 25, and x times x is x squared. See? So you want to just have a square, all right? The second thing that it must have, the second condition is, that the second term must have a different sign than the first term. So here's a positive 4a squared, and then we have a minus 9a to the fourth, see? So that one works. We have a positive 25 minus x squared, positive, negative. Now look, we have a negative 25 plus x squared. Well, those are different signs, so actually that would work, even with the negative one first and then a plus sign, okay? So is this a difference of two squares, the difference of two perfect squares? It has a minus sign. And the square of 16a to the second power is 4a in parentheses with the square on the outside, see? And the square of 36 is 6 squared. So yes, it has both conditions. They have different signs, that's a positive, that's a negative, and they're both squares. How about this one? This one's a no. It has the minus sign, and that's a positive and that's a negative, so that works, but it's not a perfect square. 10 does not work, see? If it was 9, it would work, because then we'd be able to put a 3 and a 3, wouldn't we? How about this one? The second term doesn't have a different sign, so nope, it doesn't work, because we can't have a positive and a negative when we're factoring. They have to be the same, see? So that won't work. That's the only way we're going to get a negative 25. Well, now we've got a negative 4 plus 36x squared. Yes! We're going to rewrite it as a difference. So if you have a negative 4 and you're adding 36x squared, we can flip it around to be 36x squared minus 4. See? That'll give us 6x plus 2 and 6x minus 2. So that one works. Okay? So just remember from grade school, perfect squares are whole numbers. And when we multiply a number to itself, we get a perfect square. So these are all perfect squares. 8 times 8 is 64, 9 times 9 is 81, and it goes on and on. And because we can add exponents when we multiply the bases, the product rule of exponents lets us turn this x to the fourth into x to the second times x to the second, doesn't it? And x to the eighth power could be x times x to the fourth power times x to the fourth power, see? And when we have an exponent on the outside, we multiply the outer exponent to the inner exponent inside the parentheses, right? Because that's the base. That's the first power rule of exponents. So this would be x to the third times x to the third. It's the same thing as x to the sixth. See? So we just when there's one on the inside and one on the outside, we just multiply them. Okay? And did you know the difference of two squares for 4x squared minus 10 can be written as 2x plus 10 inside of a radis radical symbol and 2x minus 10 inside of a radical symbol, but that's way in the future. We'll talk about that way into algebra, okay? Now our next video is factoring the difference of two squares, and that's going to be 6.2b. And if you want to see videos for the rules for exponents, like what I talked about here, or factoring monomials or factoring binomials, which we talked about right before this video, it's going to be a link in this description so you can go to those videos, all right? So we're going to move on to 6.2b. I'm going to talk about factoring the difference of two squares, and I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you next video. Bye.